So today we're going to be going over Euler's equation. And it's kind of like a variant of the constant coefficients, except for, of course, we don't have constant coefficients. We have um, non-constant coefficients, as you can see from the t squared right here, the t right here, and the c right here. So this form right here is called Euler's equation. And there is a convenient, unique way of solving this type of equation. And this will basically just be our introduction to non-constant coefficients. So this really smart guy named Euler came up with this idea to solve this kind of equation by assuming the form of y is equal to t to the r. So previously we were assuming e to the r times t, but this guy, Euler, he figured out that if we assume this form that we can actually solve this equation. So uh, let's go ahead and try it and see what happens. So if I were to differentiate this, I get r times t to the r minus one. And if I differentiate it again, I get r minus one times r times t to the r minus two. So let's go ahead and plug these three equations back in to our differential equation. And we get a t squared r minus one times r times t to the r minus two plus b t times r times t to the r minus one and then plus c times t to the r and all this has to equal zero because we are still homogeneous right here so um, we can see that uh, we have a t squared and a t to the r minus two we can actually combine those and what happens is this comes over and gets rid of this negative two and this comes over and gets rid of this negative one and we've kind of basically gotten this in terms of t to the r. So let's go ahead and rewrite that. We have a times r minus one times r times t to the r plus b times r t to the r plus c times t to the r all equals zero. So next we're going to go ahead and divide by t to the r just like we did uh, previously except for we had e to the rt. Um, so yeah when we divide by that we get a characteristic equation and it looks kind of like what it does in the constant coefficient case except for it's a little bit different and we can see that right here so this is our characteristic equation for uh, Euler's equation so now we can go ahead and simplify this and find the roots so we get a r squared minus a r plus b r plus c is equal to zero and I'm going to rewrite that as a r squared minus a minus b times r and then plus c is equal to zero. So when we use the quadratic equation on this, we get a minus b, that's our negative b, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is a minus b squared. We can just drop the negative since it's being squared. Um, so b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. And this is going to be our first and second roots. So we now have an expression for our roots. And now what happens is since we have our roots and we have the form that we assumed, then all we have to do is combine them. Uh, so we can express our final solution as c1 times y1 plus c2 times y2, which is really just t or c1 t to the r1 plus c2 t to the r2 where we have our expressions for r1 and r2 right there so this is our answer but it's not always that simple there is three cases just like uh, we had in the um, in the constant coefficient case we have just you know real roots we have imaginary or complex roots and we also have repeated roots and in each of these cases, we're going to be doing a very similar thing. Real roots is pretty much just straight up, throw it in there, you're done. Uh, imaginary complex, you have to use Euler's formula, but there's a little tricky part that we will go over. It's a little bit different, but um, we'll see why. And then repeated roots, we use that reduction of order process, and uh, we can basically derive a general form just like we did last time. Instead of multiplying your, uh, your, known, equ uh, your known solution by just a t, you'll multiply it by something else. So anyway, that's a quick overview of Euler's equation. And uh, we will work through all of these cases right here. So thanks for watching and see you next time.